Okay, so this is the Steadicam Merlin 2 gimbal. Uh, this is the gimbal part, and then we'll add the vest afterwards, but you can use this by, by itself on its own. Um, you're just supporting all the weight yourself, which is fine. These cameras are usually pretty lightweight anyway, but if you're going to work all day, you'll add the vest. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my camera ready with the lens that I like, the lens cap off, the memory card in, the battery, in, and whichever lens I'm using because I have to balance for this lens specifically and anytime I change that lens out I'm gonna have to completely rebalance it. So I'm gonna go with the kit zoom lens here um, And set it in just in the middle position. So I'll have the most range and it's ready to go and then This kit comes with the dovetail plate uh, mounting screw mid weights finishing weights and starting weights and you'll see there's a lot more here so once I have all this ready, I'm going to reference the Merlin 2 cookbook, which is online. And you can find the camera that you, you're using and the weight. This will tell us which of these weights to use. This is telling me to use one start weight on the front, one mid weight and one finishing weight on the back. This is, it gives us the ballpark of what's going to balance out. It also tells us that the distance between, the, the arc distance, so between this little dot on my on the bottom of the gimbal and the front of the plate, it tells us that it's 32 centimeters. So I just measure that and get it pretty close. And then it tells us that our stage position is needs to be at 1.75. The 1.75, we're just lining it up with the front of our stage here. This is called the carriage. And then it also tells us that the dovetail position needs to be at 6.75. So uh, right around here once I mount it. So I'm going to do that now. It also tells us that the mounting hole is in for this camera. So I'm going to go in there. I believe the GH4 is in, just slightly further back. These are all approximate, so you might have to adjust them just based on your lenses. But this is just the starting point that saves us time. All right, make sure that's secure, and then I'll put it on. The starting point was 675, so I'm just, the front of this stage dovetail, I'm gonna put it 675. So we're secure now. Um, I am um, not level, so I'm gonna, before I, I go any f and forward, I'm going to adjust my roll axis, so left and right, and I do that on the bottom here. It's heavy on the left, so I need to, to move the stage to the left. Just rotate it here. I'm gonna bring it back to the center and see how that looks. Still a little off. Doesn't have to be perfect yet. I'm gonna do some other adjustments before I come back and fine tune fine tune everything. So it's it's closer. Do one last turn. That looks good. I'm going to do the drop time next, um, but I just want to make sure there's no tilt forward or backwards. It's slightly front heavy right now, tilting down slightly. So I'm going to tilt it up just a little bit. And if I balance the weight on the table for a second before I bring it up, it helps me see what's happening. Doesn't have to be perfect yet. We're we're just doing drop time, so I, I want to see how it is. So drop time is how long it takes for the camera to upright itself from a horizontal position. You can just get your arm out of the way, you can tilt the handle, the handle and drop it. So it's a little bit fast. We want that total time to be around a second. Okay, so I'm trying to increase the drop time sl slightly. It's not bad, it's close to where we want it at one second from going horizontal to vertical. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just the Z axis here. Um, and you do that by pressing this button on the front and that unlocks it. And then you can turn it counterclockwise to add more threads. So the more threads I have, the top heavier this gets because it's putting the center of the balancing further away. Um, if I go closer, the bottom heavier it gets. So this has an ex a suggestion as well, the, the cookbook of negative three turns. So 
roughly three revolutions from when it's tight at the top. Uh, this looks like it's at four now, so I'm going to try that. It should have increased our time slightly. And it looks like it did. Yes, so it's a little over a second. I like that. I'm going to go with it. So now I'm going to adjust my tilt forward again. So I'm kind of going up or uh, tilted down or slightly. So now I need to kind of fine tune my overall tilt by getting this level. And then um, if I can't quite get, get it to stay still, I need to increase or decrease the arc. So let's see if I need to do that. I need to go down a little. All right, so our gimbal is balanced. We're going to add the vest. You want to adjust this to where the weight is on the on your hips, uh, but your snug, you know, on the chest and shoulders as well. But the the weight when you put it on is really just sitting on top of your hips. You want your legs to do the work. Okay, so. I just notice there's a back pad. Uh, these are over my hips. This front. And then there's a whole other strap that's in the middle section. And then my shoulders. Uh, the weight's going to come down on and push all these, so be aware of that as you're adjusting. You're probably going to need to put the arm on at some point to test it and then readjust it. So I'm going to grab the arm. This little silver part slides in. These will attach and make them started. So I'm going to tighten both of these at the same time. Um, don't just tighten all, one all the way and then the other. But you want them even so the arm sits level with my hips. And if the arm's like falling away from you too much, uh, you know, that, that's when you would adjust, you know, tighten the bottom one if it's, if it's going too far away. If it's too close, then tighten the top one. But usually just the middle position is good, which is both, you know, like thumb tight. This isn't going to go anywhere. The bottom of our handle here just slides on to the post. Then I need to adjust the tension on my arm. As you can see, it's pushing it up really high. So there's a lot of attention now. And let's adjust the bottom one first. To where it's level. And then I want to loosen this one as well, but not all the way. I want to get a little bit below head height. So it just stays put. These are easier to adjust when they're under stress, so when you have weight pressing against them. Let's see, it's still pressing pretty high up. It's on its own, it just kind of goes out. Just using my left hand to kind of guide the sway. But I'm not using my arms at all to hold the weight of the camera. I'm just really guiding where I'm pointing. And then the height with with this with this handle as well. I would start with getting both arms just level, like I did, and then adjusting the tension from there. Yeah, just do some walking and then like to see if it's absorbing. Like how much movement am I getting from that? Your hip movement should be mostly absorbed by the first arm. Don't want to let go of the camera because it could just go crashing into something. And then this arm, it, it makes it easy to like, it doesn't move on its own. It just goes where I want it to go. So if I'm fighting too hard against the tension to go up or down, that, that means I need to adjust this. And this should be lower, uh, closer to your hips. Uh, and it makes it easier for your, your get out of your own way as far as your arms go. Um, but for the demo, this is good. 
but you'll see this would just be resting lower. And I still try to walk without much uh, bounce, right? I try to like keep all my movement, hips and below. Just practice walking with your knees pretty much bent off the whole time and you won't move as much. And then the, the arm will take out the rest and then the gimbal will help keep that steady so it's not jerky. It's, it doesn't remove all movement, it just makes it less distracting. The hardest, I guess the, the hardest part is, um, you know, once you're moving, you're good, but starting or stopping a motion is what takes the most practice. So rounding a corner to stop on something is gonna take a lot of practice to get that a smooth motion without like stopping the camera suddenly. Um, and you just like keep a couple of fingers on this and, you, and you'll get a, a hang of it. Um, but following shots, as long as you give yourself pre-roll and exit roll, like um, record through the end of it, um, you should be able to edit on the action and you'll be fine. And what else tips are there? This just takes practice, uh, more practice than any of the other gimbals. Um, the, just hours on it is basically what it is. Okay, so now we're going to attach a, a gimbal to the Steadicam, which actually makes it a lot simpler of a setup. Um, you have to balance the camera and the gimbal by itself before you add it to this. Um, and we just added a, um, a, a baby pin on this side mount. And this is just like a regular tripod screw down here to the bottom of our gimbal, just a quarter inch uh, adapter there. And then this will slide right on to the end of our Steadicam arm. I'm gonna make sure it's super tight. All right, so we're good. Um, and then there's three different levels of adjustment we need to do here. Um, on the back side of this, uh, this piece that connects to the vest, there are two screws, and the, the top and bottom screw, and this adjusts the, whether the arm falls away from you or, or towards you, and you, you want, want to make sure where the, the arm stays still. So it just balances the, I guess, the fore and aft of the arm. When we want the, 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 the balance, the weight, the center of gravity to, to, to just be stable. We truly can demonstrate it being still and not really moving one way or the other. So this is pretty good. It's not, it's barely like going forward or backwards. The next thing we want to adjust is the um, left and right. So these two silver screws. These are, this is pretty hard to adjust without taking the weight off of the arm. So this is really just, again, a two person job. So someone holds the arm up while you adjust this. And this is the left and right of, of the arm. So we hold it still, you know, how much does it swing? Which way? We want it really just to stay put without much of our force on it. And that's pretty nice. The third thing we need to adjust is the arm tension. Um, generally, this first arm is going to be, you know, parallel to the ground, level, horizontal. Um, it's going to take the, the most of the weight of this, of whatever our rig is, and balance that out to be level with the horizon. Uh, so fine tune that first, and then this one is just the you know, what height do we want the camera? Uh, it also helps cushion, again, like this one, our steps. Um, so, you know, head height, uh, eyeball height is usually the pretty common, um, but we, we have some play here. Um, it also helps just, um, you know, how much force does it take to point where you want it to be? And you want it to 
to where you can control it all with just your fingertips. We don't want any of the force uh, of our arms, basically, uh, to be controlling this rig, because um, that movement would get picked up um, as we go. You know, if we're using our arms to keep it in place, then uh, our body movement is going to get translated to the, the, the shot. I think the batteries are dead in the same. That's fine.